All right, guys, so I've been getting so many uh, questions and comments and wanting to know this and that about the waste oil burner. So today I thought I'd make a quick video of showing y'all uh, loading up my reservoir, storage tank, whatever, for feeding the fire. So I'm going to show y'all real quick how I'll do that and how we'll light a fire up and do that just for the fun of it too. So y'all stick on with us. So we're filling up our containers with our waste oil uh, transmission fluid. It's probably got some uh, diesel in there. As long as it doesn't have gas in it, you don't want to put gas in it. But I know there's some brake cleaner stuff that gets mixed in there with it, but definitely don't want gas in it. Uh, anyways, I like to save the two and a half gallon containers. They're the easiest to, uh, A, get up there, climb the ladder to get up to my reservoir. Uh, it's easier to carry those up the ladder and it's easier to pour those into my reservoir once I show you all that up there. But uh, these are, I believe these are 20 gallon drums. Uh, I don't know what was in them. Uh, they were in our barn a long time ago when I first started doing this. I got four of them. And uh, that's what I made my, well, I'll show y'all real quick. That's what I made my own uh, oil drain catch system thing, whatever, from the lift, doing transmission pans, uh, changing oil, doing rear diffs, whatever. That's what's in there also is gear oil. But uh, holds 20 gallons, made it myself, because y'all know if you go buy one of these, even the cheaper one at Harbor Freight, you're going to spend well over a hundred bucks. If you buy a name brand one, you're looking more like 300 bucks, but that works great. Um, you can buy the, the bigger wider pan adapter thing you can stick in here to catch bigger stuff. Like when you're doing a transmission pan drop, if you wanted to, that's a $10 Harbor Freight dolly that I just ratchet strap it to. Um, this works great. Did a shower drain. Uh, that way nothing really big falls down in there. I probably ought to put a smaller screen over that and it'll help keep trash out of the oil and stopping up my waste oil burner but anyways that's where these drums are from so when that gets full like i said i have four of these so i can just change them out and i just have a garden hose adapter right here that screws into the smaller port and it makes it a lot easier doing this right here and not making a big old mess with it uh unless you let one of the cans overfill like i did a minute ago but anyways that's why i'm doing this on the gravel so just filling our containers up we'll show you on a minute climb up there we'll fill the reservoir up all right we got all of our oil there ready for me to tote it up here and pour it in. But before we do that, since the drum is empty right now, this is my drain that is sitting right on the bottom. So this is where it runs down and goes to the waste oil burner. And I don't remember exactly what I did, but it's an inch or inch and a half off the bottom so that I have space on the bottom of the barrel for sediment to settle. Uh, you know, oil floats on top of water, so that way water is gonna be on the bottom. So we're gonna open this. I've already broke it loose. You can see it's starting to seep out. And we're going to let whatever's in the bottom of this barrel drain, which is probably going to start out water and then turn into some sludge and crap like that on the bottom. So hopefully this light right here isn't blinding y'all because it's blinding me too. But if I turn it off, I won't be able to see anything. So uh, let me open this up and we'll see what we got. I hope this isn't going to be a real big mess. I should have put a valve on this. I think I was just doing it in a hurry and I didn't. I'm just gonna leave it crack like that. But I'm afraid we'll make a giant mess. So this pan was already dirty, but you can see what we have running out of it. It's like dirty water right now. So I've kind of rednecked, engineered this up because it's still dripping. And uh, I just really don't want to unscrew that and have a big old watery, oily, sludgy mess all come out at one time and get all over my refrigerator and whatever else. So that should catch whatever's in that uh, barrel because I don't think I went more than about an inch or an inch and a half. So I'm just gonna leave this dripping tonight and let it do its thing because uh, I'm tired and we'll get up there first thing in the morning and we'll put that oil on there and light the stove up. So I think it's going down, it's going down to the thirties tonight. So it'll be cool in the morning. So I'll have a legitimate reason to uh, light this up and we'll do that. And then we'll see also what's coming out of there. Cause I bet it's probably gonna stop dripping once it gets to the sludge or maybe just start oozing out then. But that'll be easier to handle than a bunch of nasty water coming out all at one time. All right, so we're up here on the loft. This is the waste oil burner reservoir we have here. 
just a 55 gallon drum that I cut one ring off of uh, holds roughly 30 gallons give or take um, just put a wire screen in there to catch big debris that may dump out of the bucket in it so anyways we got our 26 gallons of oil up here that we've poured into these smaller containers it makes it easier to pour and the reason is because my ceiling's here I just didn't want to run it any further away from the stove than I had to because I needed enough fall for it to feed correctly so this is what I did uh, it works for now kind of wish I'd done a full-size 55 gallon drum and just moved it over further so that I could go on and have that much more capacity but uh anyways just pour the oil in here nothing special about it and uh, fill it up so I'm gonna get all these poured into here and uh, we'll get down there and uh, clean the burner pot out and light it up all right so now that we got our oil up in our reservoir what I usually have to do every day before burning this is all the residual left over from the previous burn just all the crud and the oil that doesn't burn up um, Got to clean that out. This is a uh, saucepan, stainless steel saucepan. It's about eight inches in diameter, about, I don't know, three and a half, four inches deep, give or take. Um, so I'm gonna go clean this out and then we'll clean out our little oil drip tube because it can get a little bit coked up with oil right there on the end where it's exposed to heat and then we'll be ready to burn it. So this stuff just chips all out with a screwdriver and then I uh, dump it out in my trash can in here and then we're ready to burn after that. So I'm gonna put the camera down and get this cleaned up. All right, so right inside of this big tube that you see here is a piece of 3 8 copper. You can probably barely see it sticking out of the bottom there. But uh, sometimes it gets a little bit of oil build up right there in the end that kind of gets coked up on it. So I just take my 90 degree pick and get right inside of the tube and just go around and it knocks these pieces off. And then you're ready to burn. So you just put your pot in. And I will say when I built this, I kind of experimented with the height that this needed to be off of the pot. And I believe what I have is the tube in there is about three quarters of an inch to one inch off of the bottom. And uh, that gives, gives you a real good kind of cone shape blowing out of this pot here. Uh, if you hadn't watched the whole video on me building this, I built this so that I could burn wood in it also if I wanted to, because this could be removed pretty easy by unbolting it in the back of the drum here. So this is lined with steel plate so that I could burn wood in it if I wanted to without burning the bottom of the barrel out. So I'd kind of keep the barrel uh, protected from the hot coals just sitting right there against it. So this is, I don't know, eighth inch steel plate that I welded to go all around here in the bottom. So uh, let's get some uh, fuel in here and light this thing up. So for getting this started, what I usually do is just a little bit of transmission fluid. I'll pour just a little bit in the pot there and uh, light that up. And then you just let this burn until you hear it to start kind of boil and crackle. Like it's getting hot enough to start just igniting all the oil up in the pot. And then I'll start my feed up there at the top. So let me get my torch, we'll light that up. So I'll just put the torch down in here, heat this for just a second, gets that hot enough to start burning. And you kind of let it do its thing and get uh, warmed up and you'll start hearing it kind of boil and crackle. Almost sounds like water starting to boil and then we'll start our feed. So just as a baseline right now, the stove is uh, 77 degrees. We just lit that up in there. It's been burning for a couple minutes, letting that oil get going. You can see in there, it's starting to light off that transmission fluid pretty good and crackle like I said. So we're gonna go on and start our feed just real slow. Just barely from a drip is what I start at. We'll let that, once this kind of works its way down there, which you can see, that's why I did the clear tube. Oil goes down there, it goes to the copper tube, it goes in to the big tube in the back there. That other line is what goes to my blow dryer. It feeds the fire. It really makes it burn nice and clean and hot. All right, so this is what we're looking like in there right now. So now we're gonna kick our blow dryer on. Let's see if I can crack this door open. What is it doing that? That's what you got once you kick it up. Of course, it pushes smoke out if you open the door. Probably get a peek through here.
Let's see what our temperature is now for a starting point. So right now we're at 219. Well, yeah, 219 right there. Door is 223. Top of that barrel is 220. And the upper barrel right now is at 103 at the bottom. 89 at the top. So uh, we'll wait about five minutes and we'll see what we're at then. We're going to kick our fans on. This bottom one just kind of blows against the back of the bottom barrel. And the top one here blows through my heat exchanger up here at the top. All right, so we've been burning about 15 minutes. Top of the bottom barrel is right there, around 600. Door is 790. Barrel right above the fire is about 530. Bottom of the top barrel, 290. Top of the barrel, 205. And the lowest tube where the air is blowing out right inside of there is 330. And I mean, you stand in front of this thing for a minute, your clothes smell like they just came out of the dryer. It's hot. There's our stream of oil right now. So you doctor on this thing and you keep adjusting that just a little bit and you go up as much as you can to where it's still completely burning. You can get this thing to where it's burning 900 degrees or so right here on the door in front of this barrel. Hot. Hot enough you don't want to stand right in front of it. Things I would improve on this. Uh, putting a seal around the door would probably be a good thing. I need to make something for those vents where you can close them when you want to. And I need to make some kind of enclosure with an actual actual squirrel, squirrel cage fan instead of using box fans. Uh, that'd be a vast improvement for really moving some air through here and uh, pushing it further into the shop out here. But uh, I will say none of the walls are insulated in this shop at all. That's just metal and Tyvek on the walls. Uh, the ceiling is insulated. That's supposed to be like a R10 value on the, the roof there. Uh, but you can shut the doors. Doors aren't insulated either. I don't even have my seals around the doors. It can be below freezing outside. You crank this thing up and keep it running as hot as you can. And you can work in here in a t-shirt all day long with this thing. Another thing I'd like to improve on is the blow dryer it does a great job of running the fire. Uh, I do have it on the cool setting, of course, so it's not melting that vacuum cleaner hose. But I mean, this doesn't even get hot back here. You can, you can touch this metal tube because it's got air blowing through it, it doesn't get hot. But uh, I get tired of listening to the blow dryer. That's the one thing, if I could come up with something better to run the blower for the fire and not make as much racket as that, it would be nice. Uh, me and Gary, something sitting here at lunchtime, eating lunch and it's cold and we got this going. It just gets a little old listening to it. So before I shut this thing down, you see we're at 8.30 on the door. We're still right there, it's around 600 front of the bottom barrel 318 heat exchangers putting out that's in that side of that tube right there top and then uh, I hadn't talked about my thimble that's actually a catalytic converter off of a 6.0 that I gutted that's five inch diesel exhaust you can see my thimble right there is 140 then over here where it attaches to the wall is uh, 130. Of course, I have cement board down here where everything gets hot. This jack always stays here when I'm not using it. I mean, it just gets warm to the touch. Same thing with the refrigerator, warm to the touch. So with my, that 26 gallons of oil that I put up there, if I'm running this thing like this and I'm trying to just crank out as much heat as I can, I'll probably burn two or two and a half gallons in a day, in a good eight, 10 hour day. If I'm just trying to maintain it at around four or 500 degrees, which is typically what I do, unless I'm for some reason trying to work with the door open or something like that, uh, probably more in the gallon to gallon and a half range for the day running it. But this was a game changer with the shop and working in the wintertime and making it comfortable. And uh, I don't know, I get cold easy and I like having the heat in here. It, it just makes it way more enjoyable working in the shop. So when you go to shut it down, I just close my little needle valve. The residual oil in there runs down. And then it'll, it'll take this thing about 
I don't know, I'll time it here, matter of fact, when I shut the camera off. Uh, I'll tell y'all, it'll probably be five to 10 minutes for it to just shut all the way down, flame to go out. I'll let the fans run in the back for just a minute, cool this down and uh, shut the shop down and go in the house. I just make sure that the flame is all the way out before I leave it. So it took about five minutes for the flame to go all the way out. You can see we are cooling down now. Like I say, I'm gonna let those fans run for a minute, cool the stove down, and then I'll leave it alone. I won't worry about it. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to kind of show y'all the maintenance and uh, how you fill the reservoir up there for the waste oil burner, uh, the process for lighting the fire up for the day, kind of tweaking it, um, set up like that. Anyways, it, it could be perfected more. Uh, I, this wasn't totally my idea. I got the general concept from Jerry's DIY. If y'all are interested in kind of trying to do this for yourself or building your own concept of it, go check out Jerry's DIY. I think he's uh, British maybe, um, anyways, but he's built so many different concepts of the waste oil burner, um, all different kinds, different ways to do it, different ways to feed the fire where it draws its own air or where you're air feeding it like I'm doing here. But go check his stuff out. That's where I got the idea from. I uh, hadn't seen anybody do it in a double barrel stove, however, until I did this. Uh, so if you got a big shop, you enjoy working in it, you're in a cold climate, even colder than what I'm in, and you got plenty of access to used oil, just like I do, consider building you one of those and uh, heat your shop with it. Uh, I love it. it. It makes the world of difference working out here. It makes it enjoyable for me. When we do have a get together or a party or something, we empty the shop out. You can enjoy, everybody can enjoy being in here because it's comfortable. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Y'all go check out all our stuff on the channel. Go check out the double barrel build. Go check out making it a waste oil burner. And uh, if you're into power strokes, into forward stuff, there's a lot of content like that on this channel also. You can check us out at Automatic Garage, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, it's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.